Uh, hello, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, hello. <laughs> uh, it's not afternoon yet, but it is noon. Getting started here a little later than normal. <laughs> wow, the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Those of you, brethren, sisters of the Church of the Living God, you know that whenever the Lord glorifies himself by using you, brings glory unto his name by putting you in a situation, um, putting you somewhere, giving you something to do, because we all have something to do. And when the Lord gets glory through that, savor every moment uh, for the Lord's glory, uh, giving thanks unto the Lord, you know, praise the Lord, because what happens? Uh, and those of you of the church of the living God, whom the Lord will use, okay, and he uses, you know, we're, we're going to look at this today. Um, you know that once the Lord uses you for his glory, number one, it's no glory to you whatsoever. But number two, there will always seem to be allowed some retaliatory strike against you from the devil to, to either buffet you or to whatever. <laughs> Satan will be allowed to, you know, to do something, infinitesimal as it may seem, <coughs> when the Lord uses you for his glory, um, Satan will be allowed, it seems, to give a kick. Yes, you know how you read about Paul, about all the uh, abundance of the revelations there was given him. A thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet him. That happens to us in the church of the living God. And you know that, some of you. That when the Lord uses you or puts you in a situation in all glory to the Lord, whether it's uh, being a witness, handing out a tract, talking, uh, reading the word for others to hear, um, giving an example by how um, you behave in a situation, it doesn't matter. It seems that the Lord will allow a kick to come to you from Satan to buffet you. What are you going to do? That's the, that's the way it is. But, um, yeah, wow, the empire strikes back. <laughs> it's all about humility. It's all about humility. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. This is where we're going to start. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Today we are going to be answering, looking at three things, three words today. We're going to be looking at elder, bishop, and deacon. What's the difference? They have all similar qualities, yes, and they're not titles, but they we are going to see that these are obviously positions Positions, callings, uh, things that we have within the body of Christ, okay? Within the body of Christ. And what we see today, because of Jesuitism, because of Jesuitism, Catholicism, which is Christianity, we see a hierarchical system um, being developed. And we're going we're gonna to look at this. Um, what happened? What has happened is Satan, who is all about flesh, and we're, we're going to look at that too. Let's let's let the scripture explain this. First Corinthians chapter four, verses six on to verse seven to start. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, as the scriptures we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Okay, make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. Sure, I'm not lying to you, okay? You got a question about the context? Pause the video and read the context on your own time, okay? All right? Follow me along. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Follow me along because sometimes this ah, goes quicker than this, okay? You watch any of these videos the Lord gives me to do, you, you'll know that, okay? But... 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 6 on to verse 7. 
All these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, for your sakes, okay? That ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Okay? Skipping along, uh, like I said, you want context? Read the whole chapter on your own time, okay? Uh, verses 18 on to verse 20 now. Let's skip a little ahead to this, okay? Now, some are puffed up as though I would not come to you, but I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, which is right there, clear as day context, is talking about the spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God, okay? Not the actual physical, literal kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Okay, the, the things that are different are not the same. Okay? For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Walking the talk, living according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, okay, verses 1 and 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Not by the wisdom of men and stuff like that. Not by fleshly means, no. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, Christ is the one who is being glorified. Christ is the one who does the speaking through us. Vessels meet for his use. Okay, it is all glory to God, our Lord Jesus Christ. None goes to ourselves. Okay, it's not how it works. Go to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verses 18 and 19. Okay? 18 and 19. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he had not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the capital H, head, and who is the head of the body? That be Christ. Okay? And not holding the head, from which all the body, by joints and bands, having nourishment, ministered, and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Okay? Apollos water, I watered, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Okay? We are called to serve, not ourselves, but others, one another, okay? Called to preach, okay? Called to preach, which will be in the description box, obviously. You gotta write that down. Called to preach, why do we preach? It's like the witnessing, why do we witness? Okay, why, all right? We are to serve others, not serve ourselves. Okay? Let this mind be in you. Serving others as Christ came to serve, not to be served. Okay? He came to give his life a ransom for many. Okay? We as the church of the living God, we are servants, not slaves of the Lord Jesus Christ. And our calling as the church of the living God are to be ambassadors. And see, so many out there can talk. Oh, oh, there are so many out there who can talk so good, who are so smooth, who speak like a dragon, yes, and they sound so righteous and pious and meek and humble. And... No, scratch them a little bit and you'll see the Darth Vader come out in them, you know. But we are called to be that. We are called to be servants, brethren. That is our calling, to serve others, to serve Christ, and in serving Christ, we serve others. Okay, that's, that's how it works, okay? 
not about ourselves. And what happens because of Jesuitism, which is Catholicism, Roman Catholicism, this thing of hierarchy, I'm better than you because I have a title affixed to me. Titles. This thing about titles. Okay. Job chapter 32. Job chapter 32. There are positions, callings within the body of Christ, the church of the living God. Okay. This is what I am called to. Okay. To preach and to teach. This is what I am called to. Okay. There are others out there who are called to different things, but we all have functions, services within the body of Christ. All right. We do. All right. And we do not, we're not all called to the same calling. You know this, but Job 32 verses 21 and 22. This is, this is the whippersnapper, the whippersnapper, Eliu speaking. Okay. The whippersnapper. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. Neither let me give flattering titles unto man, for I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my maker would soon take me away. And amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Okay? We have different callings, different positions. But see, flesh, man, flesh is always the problem, wants to take that calling, that position, and then put it into a title, and hence... We see people getting puffed. Up. Oh, yeah. I, I've struggled with, I struggle with it. Okay, I struggle with it. I struggle with pride every day. But you see some of these people, these preachers, these pastors, they, uh, you know, and I've had people call me pastor before. It's like, okay, they, I've been called worse. Okay. <laughs> I've been called a lot worse. You know, you get a certain guy from England all uh, huffy and puffy. He'll call you worse than anything you want to be called. He's Christian, too. <laughs> there you go, buddy. But, um, you know, I've been called worse. And in and of itself, to be referred to as a pastor, a teacher, or whatever, in and of itself is not a bad thing. But see, what happens is flesh gets in the way and it can be something of an exaltation. Exaltation. Not exhortation. Exaltation, where you puff yourself up. And you, you've seen this here. You've seen it in me. Okay? You've seen it in me. You've seen it in others. Not going to name any names. Okay? Where you get to a position and that flesh gets in the way. Okay? Okay? It's important to remember Paul and his thorn in the flesh. It's also when you start getting a little hoity-toity and thinking a little bit better of yourself than you should, read Lamentations. Read Lamentations. Bring you back down to earth. Okay? But Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. We're going to read verses 1 out of verse 12. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. Now, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. The law was still binding. Faith and works was a part of salvation under the dispensation of the law. Okay? Salvation changes within the dispensations. Okay? That's, being, that's rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? That's rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? But unto the Jews were given the oracles of God. At this time, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was not a permanent resident in any believer yet at this time. The death, burial, and resurrection had to take place. So the Jews, when they would speak in the synagogues, were actually speaking the oracles of God. But what were they not doing? They were saying, but they weren't doing it. Their walk was not matching their talk. And what it did, it was done for what? Theater. For a shoe to dance and strut their stuff upon the stage and to be heard of no more. 
It's a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing, okay? Should be reading some Shakespeare, too, okay? But, yes, that's what that verse 3 is talking about. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but not do not ye after their works. For they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. And love the uppermost rooms at feast. It's a thing of position. Okay? And the chief seats in the synagogues. And greetings in the markets. And to be called of men. Rabbi. Rabbi. But be not ye called rabbi. For one is your master. Even Christ. And all ye are brethren. And call no man father upon earth. For there is, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Stop. Lower case F. Call no man father upon earth. For one is your capital F father, which is in heaven. This is not talking about your biological father that you cannot refer to your father as father. That, that contradicts. There are so many contradictions on that. It's not what that is talking about. You can say to your father, Hi, father. You know, your you know, your biological flesh father, okay? Uh that's not what that is talking about. That is not what that is talking about. You can go to your father, mother, father. You can say, Hello, father. Okay, address him as father. What this is talking about is titles. Father, Reverend, so and so, the Jesuit priests who are other Christ or are taught. To, uh, teach you people that there are other Christ and that Jesuitism of how their Catholic priest is viewed as another Christ. You see these people that go to the Jesuit cemeteries. They come out and they have that exaltation of pastor. Okay? It goes to their head. I'm a pastor. I have a hundred thousand. Have you ever talked to one of these Jesuit trained cemeterians before? Okay? Um, it doesn't take, especially if you're of the Church of the Living God, holding to the scriptures, rightly dividing the word of truth, uh, everything that is contrary to what these Jesuit trained with their yea hath God said in the, syna in the synagogues, in the cemetery schools that come out of it, okay? We as the Church of the Living God who preach the true Christ, you ever encounter some of these Jesuit trained cemetery and twits, these pastors... With their degrees, it, it, it comes out every time. I am this because I... Bravo, bravo. And like it says in Hebrews, no man taketh this honor upon himself but those who are what? Called. Okay? But we see this about people getting puffed up in their titles that they give themselves. There are different positions. And we are to be servants. But what happens is when you get to start throwing around things like pastor, uh, deacon, elder, bishop, okay? Those are positions that are not titles, okay? Got to watch out for that. And I, I, I struggle with it myself too. Many people do. And if you're in the, any kind of position like this in the body of Christ and you say that you don't, you're a liar. And that's there's evidence of your pride as well. Let's continue in this, okay? <clears throat> so verse 9 is not talking about you calling your actual biological father, father. It's talking about religious titles, okay? <clears throat> verse 10, neither be ye called masters. For one is your master, even Christ. And James talks about be not be ye not many masters, okay? And whatsoever, and whoso, uh, but, verse 11, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And you look at Paul, you know, the more I love you, the less I am love. I will be spent and spend for you. The elder shall serve the younger. Okay? 
The elder shall serve the younger. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself, ex exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. I got some humbling last night. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Someone who loves you as a brother will tell you the truth out of love. Not to be a jerk. I, I've seen that way too many times. People using truth as a weapon to hurt and maim without brotherly love. I see You see that in a lot of the enemies of ours. But a true brother, a true sister, will tell you truth in love. And that's what a true brother, a true friend does. A true friend will tell you the truth in love. Okay? All right? But an enemy will flatter you. Will flatter you no matter what. Fla try to flatter you while people are going to go running off of a cliff. Well, a brother, a friend, a loved one will tell you truth. Oh, uh, is it faithful are the kid? Uh, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Amen. Hallelujah. But the kisses of the enemy, of an enemy, are deceitful. Amen. 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 Second Corinthians chapter ten. Things that are different are not the same, brother. Now, what you brought up, I'm addressing a beloved, a beloved brother. Um, one day going to be a, one day going to be doing this, okay? But um, things that are different are not the same. There are there are there are positions, okay? We are all one in Christ Jesus to be servants, yes. But the scriptures plainly show us that there are different callings, different positions that we take, and they are never to be used as, well, I'm going to pull rank on you or any nonsense like that. And some, it goes to their head. It goes to their head. But we're, we're going to talk a, a little bit more about that in length. But 2 Corinthians 10, verses 11 on to the close. <sighs> Let such an one think this, that, such as we are in word, by letters, when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. Walk the talk. What you see here is what you're going to see and meet if you and I were to meet personally. Okay? <clears throat> For we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Wise. Wisdom equated with the fear of the Lord. But we will not boast of our things without our measure. But according to the measure of the rule which God hath distributed to, to us, a measure to reach even unto you. See, what we in the Church of the Living God, within the positions that we have, it's not something to be lorded over people, but it's there for what? To benefit, to grow, to teach, to exhort, and all these things. So it's self-sacrifice. That's what it is. It's charity, which is self-sacrifice. We do what we do as a church of the living God out of charity, okay? Which is self-sacrifice, okay? And the boasting is not to exalt ourselves, Paul was doing that as a defense because, I mean, it, it finally got to the point where he had no choice. But just like, oh, you, dude, really? You really want me to? Fine. You want credentials here. Here they are. But they're nothing. They're nothing. Okay? That's what you tack upon it. Now what the Lord does. Prove it to you. Absolutely. Let's continue. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. Okay, stretch ourselves on our out of measure. What does that say? Look at that. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure as though we reach not onto you. Like going above and beyond just so you can get the glory and look good. Okay, doing that extra so that it'd be another feather in your cap. No, we're stretching ourselves. Why? Why? That we might reach you. 
okay? See, we're doing this to reach others, not to justify ourselves or to puff up or glorify ourselves, okay? All right? You got to remember that. You got to remember that, okay? All right? And I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Well, let's read verse 14, and I'll tell you then. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Let's keep reading. Not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to your rule abundantly. That we glory in others, you know, uh, joy, rejoice with those who, uh, who do rejoice and weep with those who weep. You know, be of the same mind one of another. Condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. I'm happy. I have joy in the Lord when seeing my brethren, the, the sisters, brothers and sisters, the Lord being glorified through them. It's like, praise the Lord. It's, you know, last night I heard, you know, a brother of ours was being used to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our brother, you know, you hear, I, we love that kind of stuff. That is our joy to hear how the Lord is using the brethren. Okay? That's what that's talking about. Okay? Verse 16, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you, and not to boast of another man's line of things made ready at our hand. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord, for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. Okay? All right? See, there are those out there who will stretch themselves so that they get good, so that they look good. No, no, we do it for the brethren, that others may be edified. Okay, that's why we do it. That's why we do it. And I struggle with it. Okay, and that's something. And I got to tell you, personally, I, and I, I, I'm aware of this. There are some times when I have talked down to people. I know of a brother who, in speaking to others, uh, they, he likes to talk down to you. Um, I've done that before, and I am I shame on me. And I do that sometimes. I'm aware, okay? It's a daily struggle, pride. Oh, wretched man that I am. But, you know, so when you get into these positions... And you allow your flesh to puff you up and put you on a high horse, you get to this talking down mentality. Beloved, watch how you speak unto other brethren. Brad, okay? Brethren, brethren, okay? You know, there's a time and place for everything. When the Lord's using you to rebuke a brother or a sister, Sometimes in order for that to happen, the chastening, that happens. That happened to me last night, okay? Who doctrinally speaking, scripturally speaking, was the elder. More on that in a bit, okay? But see, everything must be done in love, not in strife for vainglory. I got to remember. And I think if so many of the Church of the Living God would remember that when dealing with one another, probably wouldn't be all this division. But it is the last times before the redemption of the purchased possession. And uh, falling away is not saved brethren messed up. Because if it was saved brethren messed up, that can create what? A gray area. Well, he might be saved, just messed up. The falling away is not saved brethren messed up. The falling away are those who said they were of us and are not of us. Okay? Because if it is brethren messed up, that's what it means, the falling away that Paul talks about, then I guess everybody who's off in some way is a brother, right? That's a subtle argument. It's almost a smooth argument. But now, okay, with that out of the way, let's get to the, uh, we had to go through that, brother, sister, okay? 
elder, bishop, and deacon. We're going to examine the plural a little bit and the singular. There is not that many, okay? For example, the word elder, singular, appears 20 times in the authorized version of the scripture, according to King James Bible Online. I did not look in Strong's, okay? Elders with an S. Okay, elder, singular. You put an S on the end. Means what? Come on, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a junior high school dropout, and even I know this, okay? You put an S on the end, that means what? More than one. So elders, bishops, and deacons, okay? But what is an elder according to scripture? Elder, the singular, okay, appears 20 times. And the first appearance of elder in the derivative form, singular, appears before the plural. And we're not going to be looking at all 20 appearances, okay? But Genesis chapter 10, verse 21, okay? Elder, elder, Genesis chapter 10. Here's the first appearance. Law first mention of elder, okay? Genesis, what are you doing, Brad? Big your pardon. Genesis chapter 10, verse 21. Very first verse that disappears in. Before the plural, okay? Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, the elder, Mm. Even to him were children born. Okay? So, Japheth, the elder. Elder. What do we see here in the first reference? First appearance of this. Elder. Someone who is older. Okay? You take your own time. And you look at the singular appearance of elder. It always has to do with someone as a distance of age or experience, okay? Every single time, okay? Elders as a position, and we're going to look at this, has that in its base. Elders. That's why when you out there, <laughs> you come across... One of these elder Mormons and a kid 16 years old. <laughs> Not even serving the true Christ of the scriptures. But that man is in the son of perdition. They're, they're crazy. But <laughs> I, I, and I don't speak well, Timothy, you know, let no one despise thy youth. Okay, Timothy was brought up in the scriptures as a child. Okay, he was brought up. Okay, that's the exception. Okay, Timothy was brought up in the scripture by his grandmother, uh, you, Lois or whatever, forgive me. But Timothy was brought up in it, okay? A Mormon. <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like when you see a Hamite Mormon, okay? And my Hamitic brethren and sisters, you come across a Mormon of your kindred of Ham, you as a Hamitic brother or sister, you go to him or her or to him of the Mormons. It's like, dude, what are you doing? Do you know what it says in 2 Nephi about the curse of the black skin? You know, Joseph Smith, Smith called us because we are Hamites cursed. Wait, get out of that. Okay? Okay? But the point is, with these <laughs> older Mormons, and the kid's 16 years old. And you're an elder. Look, I don't think so. Go away, kid. Go away. Okay? All right? But then there's this thing about elder as appointment. Okay? But we're going to look at that. All right? But the first appearance of elder has to do with a thing of being older in age or experience than someone else. Okay? All right, and you look at elder in the 20 appearances every single time. It meets with that criteria, okay? Now go to 1 Timothy chapter 5, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 5. We're going to be a lot in the Pauline epistles today, okay? So, so you know. 1 Timothy chapter 5, 
First one. First one. Okay? Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. Let's read verse 2, again, two as well. The elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity. Okay? And there you see elder. Now, that context is what? Okay? And treat him as a father. Okay? As mothers. Okay? So, elder, you do the work yourself. Every time of elder, the singular, has always something to do with that uh, context of either age or experience. Okay? And also, too, in Romans chapter 9, one verse, verse 12, we see Paul referring on to the Old Testament, but it's in the Pauline epistles. Okay? Romans chapter 9, verse 12. It was said unto her, now he's quoting out of the Old Testament, the elder shall serve the younger. Okay? And context is it's talking about Esau, who God hated. Okay, but that point, that idea that we as the elder who have been in the body of Christ anywhere from five on to 10, 20 years or whatnot, hence, okay, hence, all right, stuff like that. And like I said, you look in the context of elder within the scripture, there's always that involved, okay? But now elders, 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 right? You see like a position appointing of elders. We're, we'll get to that. Elders. Now we're not going to look at the first appearance of elders. We don't need to. But we're going to look at Matthew chapter 15 verses 1 on verse 9. Okay? Now what, pay attention. Okay? Matthew chapter 15, 1 on to 9. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying... Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? And we see the elders again, okay? That context of the aged or the experienced, okay? All right? Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. I, I you know, mother, father, I, father, mother, I can't give you this because it's my tithe for the week. Or it's going to the work of the church, all right? Like a tax write-off, right? <clears throat> but yeah, but ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or mother or his mother, it is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Oh, and Catholics, Pharisees, which exalt their tradition above the scripture, the traditions of men, whatever, those are Pharisees. Okay? Ye hypocrites! Well did Isaiah, Isaiah prophesy of you, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips. The kingdom of God is not in word, but is in power, the demonstration thereof. Not just in words. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing and by the word of God. Are you walking or talk? Okay? This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they but in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of Catholics. Oh, excuse me, men. Okay. So elder alone, beloved, we see total difference. There these things are different. These are positions, okay? Positions that 
the Lord has called. They are not titles to be exalting men, okay? The Lord has put me in this position. The Lord has put you in your position, okay? And that's how that works. Many parts of one body, okay? That's how that works, all right? Now go to Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 on to verse 23, okay? From that time forth began Jesus to shew unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised again the third day. The same elders that were messing people up by their traditions, okay? The elders, the ones who were older and or had more experience, okay? All right? And the, the grouping here of elders, chief priests, and scribes, okay? With what we just read. All right. These elders were leading the people astray. Well, at the same time, as we already read in Matthew chapter 23, uh, we're actually speaking the truth, but they were not living that truth. OK, they were not living it. You've got to keep in memory. This is before the death, burial and resurrection. OK, you've got to remember that. But we as the church of the living God today, we are called to be examples. OK. And let him show. I make mistakes. Okay. I, unlike perfect uh, English creatures or some whatever creatures out there, I make mistakes. I can be a hypocrite sometimes. I have a pride problem and I struggle with my pride every single day. Okay. And praise the Lord that the Lord sends brethren who will, and sisters, like, knock you down. Okay. All right. But now verse 22, okay? Uh, wait, For, uh, let's read that again. From that time forth began Jesus to shew unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raise, raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Of men. Flesh. Satan is all about flesh. And these things where people take these, well, I'm an elder. <laughs> 16-year-old elder uh, from a moron. Or, or you get some of these people, these Christians, well, I'm an elder. Okay. How long have you been saved? Okay, all right, all right, but your walk is not matching your talk, and there's no differentiating between you and a worldly devil. Mm. Mm. And also we have to remember, when it comes to being an elder, scripturally, like I said, there's always that context of age and experience, but that in and of itself also even though you might have, be, have age and experience, are you walking your talk? Hmm? See, just in the fact alone, being an elder doesn't automatically mean that you're this perfectly sanctified creature. But see, with age, with experience, okay? Well, let's continue reading, okay? First Timothy, uh, we already read that. Go back to First Timothy now. 1 Timothy chapter 5, okay, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 20, okay, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 20, okay, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So an elder, here we see, okay, an elder, uh, uh, scripturally, via age or experience, but in this we see, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine, okay? There are some who have been saved for many years. Uh, they probably don't read the scriptures every day, 
but they've been they are truly saved born again but they've been saved for a while but yet they don't labor in the scriptures as we ought to they may read here a little there and level that's fine the laboring in the scriptures you know, is exactly that. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're all to do that, okay? But for example, what the Lord has me to read daily may be different from what he has you to read daily, okay? Um, you know, two, two hours at the least. Some, you know, spend 45 minutes. And, you know, it's not the time. It's the quality of the reading of the scripture, okay? You get what I'm saying? All right? Be careful of that. Well, I've done this amount of time. It's the quality that comes out of it. Okay? You got to watch out for that. Verse 18. For the scripture saith that thou, that, for the scripture saith, thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Because... The elder who has the age and or the experience, you know, ought to be, you know, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. So those who have been out on the battlefield, those who labor, who know the word more intimately than some, unfortunately, and that doesn't make people better or lesser. There are different callings in the body of Christ, brethren. Okay? Okay. That doesn't make me better or worse. No, but there are different callings. Okay? There are different callings. Okay? Can we all ascribe to something of an elder? Sooner or later, according to Scripture, yes. Okay? But as being an elder, through what uh, age, but also experience. Also experience. Um, okay? Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Okay? Verses 1 and 2 in Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. An elder of the church of the living God. You, you know, it's like, hey, brother so-and-so, he's been saved for so many years or whatnot. And look how he, he actually walks, okay? All right? That example of the faith that we who have been saved for a while can impart unto others because it's not about us. It's about giving back. It's about serving others, not ourselves. Okay? You see how that works? And also in Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 5. Romans chapter 5. Now this is interesting. You might find this interesting. Romans 5, verses 1 under verse 5. Okay. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh <laughs> patience, and patience experience experience and experience hope and who is our hope jesus christ is our hope okay we just looked at hebrews 11 1 and 2 okay all right and hope maketh not ashamed because of the love of god because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost which is given unto us brethren even sisters of the church of the living god who have been saved, who are in the body for quite a while. And because of what? Because of what? Hebrews chapter 5 now? Check this out. Check this out. Hebrews chapter 5, 12 on to verse 14. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be... Ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, the authorized version of the scriptures, for he is a babe. Okay? But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, 
even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, we discern good and evil by searching the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. But what that is showing us is this thing of experience that goes in with being an elder. Okay? you look, Like I said, scripturally, you look up elder, it's always a connotation with the age, but it is also a thing of experience. With the aged, the elder ought to be teaching the younger. Okay? Those of us who have been in the church and living God, the body of Christ, longer than a babe of one, two, three years. Okay? We are to be examples. See? Okay? Examples. Serving others, not ourselves. Okay? Okay? Sooner or later, I do truly believe that, you know, if you walk with the Lord for 15, 25, even 30 years, and you're in the scriptures daily, some do a little bit more detail, some don't, but you're in the scriptures daily, um, and you've had, you know, you've been on the battlefield, you've been through stuff, you've had, like it says, uh, and patience experience, you know, uh, verse 3, Romans 5. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribul tribulation work with patience and patience experience and experience hope. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. Okay? Okay? It gets scary sometimes. But see, that tribulation, that tribulation, what? Worketh patience. What my wife and, go are going, and I are going through right now, and some of you are, to have experience. So when we, in the future, a brother or a sister who comes to us or the Lord orchestrates the thing, we, it's like, hey, I've been there, man. Let's, here, let's get the scriptures. Let's talk about this. Let me, let's, let's read the scriptures and let me share with you how I went through something similar. But I've seen the end of the Lord, that he is gracious and pitiful and full of great mercy. Remember, like it says in James about the Job, the, the end of Job, how the Lord was pitiful and merciful. See, that experience, that patience, okay, as being an elder, that is what an elder ought to be scripturally. Okay? Not a title of rank. Not a title of rank to be thrown around willy-nilly. Okay? As I have seen as I have seen demonstrated. Okay? As I have seen... Ow. Demonstrated. Okay? Romans 15. Romans 15. Verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? Romans 15, verses 1 on to verse 6. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now God, now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? First Timothy. First Timothy, or not first, excuse me, Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1, on the verse 6. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, and hope of eternal life which God hath, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due times manifest his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith. 
common faith. We're all saved the same way, by grace through faith. Common, common to all men. Faith once delivered unto the saints, the common salvation. And when you got people coming along, it's like, I've seen the Lord. That's not common. Okay? You have not seen the Lord, dear men. You have seen a devil. Okay? God did not appear to you. Okay? You did not see the Lord Jesus Christ. You saw an angel of light. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay? You did not see the Lord. All right? The common salvation. Okay? <clears throat> All right, verse 4 again. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I appointed. Okay? If any be blameless, the husband of one wife having faithful children not accused of riot or unruly. Okay? So, an elder, blameless husband of one wife, okay? Husband of one wife. Husband. There are elder women, yes, which, you know, to teach the younger to love their husbands and that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, here, the thing about the um, women are not supposed to be teachers in the church of the, body, uh, church of the living God, the body of Christ, okay? Okay, it's not supposed to happen, okay? But if any be blameless, the husband of one wife, okay? All right? Having faithful children not accused of riot, riot of or unruly, okay? Right away, Paul was an elder, okay? Wasn't he? He had experience, okay? He had longevity. He had experience, was he not? But he didn't have a wife or children. Okay? There are those out there, in order to be this, you have to have a wife and children. Um, what about Paul? The exception to the rule? What about some of you out there who have chosen to uh, keep your virgin because you have no necessity and the Lord is using you? Hmm? Even speaking, preaching. Hmm? Hmm? And you've been saved for about eight years, right? See how, no, beware of people saying, well, you have to meet, always meet this, this, and this. Eh, okay? Be careful of that. All right? Now, that leads us to bishop. Bishop and bishops. Okay? All right? Um, there are people that are bishops in the church of the living God, but they might not necessarily be an elder. Okay? It would be, it's a wise thing to have a, a bishop who is an elder, absolutely, okay? But they are different, okay? They are different. There are those who are elders who are not bishops, okay? There are those who are elders who are not deacons, okay? All right? But see, these are not titles to ascribe unto men. These are positions as the Lord sees fit, Okay? Now, bishops, plural, uh, as, as far as I'm aware, appears only once. Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 7. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. There you go. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, of you always in every prayer of mine for you, always, always in every prayer of mine for you all making request with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident in this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to, to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, 
in so much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. Ye all are partakers of my grace. Defense and confirmation of the gospel is very important there, bishops and deacons, okay? Now, go to, it's interesting, bishop, singular, appears six times. All of those appearances, except for one, appears within the Pauline epistles. And deacons, interestingly enough, you will only find within the Pauline epistles. Now, you think about that. We see Bishop appear outside of the Pauline epistles in 1 Peter, okay? We see that, okay? But you do not see bishops or deacons mentioned in the book of Revelation. You see elders, absolutely. Absolutely. Like I said, we don't need to search so much on elders. That's, that's, that one's the easiest, okay? But you see elders in the book of Revelation. You do not see bishops. Or deacons, or deacon, in the book of Revelation. Isn't that interesting? Because mm. the church of the living God is not on the earth. Okay? It's not, uh, the church of the living God is not on the earth during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? We get caught up in Revelation chapter 4. Okay? But, First Timothy chapter 3 now. First Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3. Where are you going? Where are you going? First Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. Okay? This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, okay, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be, must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, Given to hospitality, apt to teach. Okay? A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Okay? Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not the brawler, not covetous. Okay? All right? One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, shall how how for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the Christians? Church of God. Yeah. Um notice the masculine pronouns. He. Okay. Um, uh, Paul in the previous chapter, First uh, Timothy chapter two verse twelve, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp, usurp authority over the man, <coughs> but to be in silence. Okay, the man is to be the teacher, the preacher, the bishop, the deacon. It's man. It's male. Okay. And, of course, you get a Bible that changes that to suit your own need, but the Scriptures condemns you on that. No women preachers or teachers like that. It's not supposed to be there within the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ. Okay? Unfortunately, we see women teachers and stuff like that outside of the body of Christ, and that's, you know, the judgment of what happens when you go against God's order. Okay? Women are supposed to be keepers at home. If we did things God's way, things would be a lot different, wouldn't they? Okay, but, okay, verse 6, not a novice, lest being filled up with pride, he should fall into the condemnation of the devil. In verse 7, moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. So then, if it's not a, no, a novice, then obviously an elder, right? Well, look at Timothy, okay? He was brought up in the scriptures, but yet he didn't have age, but experience because he was brought up in the scriptures, okay? 
There are exceptions to that. There are. There are some young brethren out there who are below the age of 30, but yet, you know, they have that experience, but they don't have the longevity in the church of the living God, but yet they have more of the experience of walking the talk, okay, of living the scriptures and stuff like that, okay? All right? And a novice, not like a babe of one or two or maybe even three years uh, in the faith, okay? We have seen what has happened, okay? The dear, the dear young men um, overseas in the United Kingdom, the dear young man, that um, hot shot uh, uh, out east of me, okay? And even uh, one up in Canada, okay? You, you see what happened when people who are not, um, who are still babes in the faith, what happens? Okay, we have seen, we have, we have testimony of that, that they can get, they can get what? Be, less being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Okay, all right. See how that works. All right. And also, now go back to Titus chapter one. Okay, Titus chapter one. Let's pick up now verse seven. On to verse 11. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, no, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Hmm. So right here you see the condition absent from... A wife. Isn't that interesting? But you see that with um, with about the elder. Okay? You see that about the elder from verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? Isn't that interesting? All right? God, remember, Paul never referred to himself as a bishop. Okay? Never referred to himself as a deacon. Okay? All right? But therein, not all elders are bishops or deacons. Okay? There are those who are deacons and bishops, for example, Timothy, okay, um, even maybe Titus, who were either deacon, could have been deacons or bishops, but were not elders. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm getting at? Okay? See what I'm getting at? Let's continue here, okay? Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be, be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convince the gainsayers. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Okay? And here's something interesting now. Uh, two of the appearances of bishop, by the way, aren't actually within the text of Scripture itself. What do you mean? And first Timothy, uh, second Timothy chapter two. Check this out. Uh, second Timothy four. I don't know if they have these in all in your copy of the scriptures. Uh, I don't think in all. Um, hold, hold on. Let me let me check. Let me check. Okay. Here. Let me check. All right. Here's I, I got another copy of the authorized version of the scriptures. Let me check. Doing this live as we speak. Uh, second Timothy chapter four. Okay. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 22. The Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. Okay. You see that? See that right there? You see that? Right? Okay. Here, where my finger is. Right there. You see that? Okay. You saw that, right? Check this out. Check this out. Where my finger is. Can you see that right here? Why? What's the point, Brad? The second epistle unto Timoth Timotheus ordained the first bishop of the church of the Ephesians was written from Rome when Paul was brought before Nero the second time. So on King James Bible Online, they accounted bishop there 
And also in Titus chapter 3, in Titus chapter 3, what are you doing? Titus chapter 3, verse 15, okay? Now again, let me demonstrate. This is important. Because King James Bible Online is accounting one of the appearance, as you saw me doing this video, uh, within the text of Scripture, that Bishop appears six times. But see here in uh, Titus 3.15 in this edition of the Authorized Version. Okay, see right there? See it? Okay, you saw that? Here again. Here again. Uh, where, where are you? In Titus 3.15, right here. See that? It was written to Titus, ordained the first bishop of the church of the Cretans from Neapolis of Macedonia. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Very, uh, very important to note. See, on King James Bible Online, they counted those two as one of, uh, two of the six appearances. So, seven take away two, you have five. Hmm, very interesting. Very, very interesting, isn't it? I just thought I would mention that to you, okay? All right? Timothy was a young man, okay? He wasn't a novice, but he wasn't an elder by age, but he had the experience, see? Okay? He had the experience, but yet, elder, you do the work yourself. Elder in Scripture always has a connotation of age. Okay? All right? But we also see that experience can account for that. But yet Timothy was never addressed as an elder. You see how that works? You see? Do you see? Okay? But go to 1 Peter now. 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2. A little bit more about what a bishop is, letting the Scripture explain itself. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 on to verse 25. But with the precious, oh, excuse me, uh, 19 on to 25 in 1 Peter 2. For this is thankworthy. If a man for conscience toward God and your grief suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently? This is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in his steps, who did no sin. We can't do that. Have no sin. Neither was guile found in his mouth. And we, unfortunately, have guile found in our mouth every once in a while, okay? There's no such thing as sinless perfection, okay? Down here, while in this, impossible, okay? Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Okay? Who his own self bear our own, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For we, for ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and, capital B, bishop of your souls. So the bishop, teaching, preaching, that kind of stuff. Okay? All right? Not all elders do that. Okay? They don't. All right? There is a difference. A lot of the same qualities, yes, that undying faith, Faithful, serving others, you know, not brawlers. Yes, those are all encompassing of an elder, bishop, and deacon. But things that are different are not the same. Okay? All right? You with me so far? You with me so far? All right? Now, also, that leads us to deacon. That leads us to deacon. All right? Deacon. Now, um, let me see. Was that it for bishops? Yes, that leads us to deacon. Deacon, now, deacon itself, deacons and deacon appear 
Deacon appears twice. And Deacons appears, what is it? One and three, one time. <laughs> I'm sorry. First Timothy chapter three. First Timothy chapter three. Okay? First Timothy chapter three. First Timothy chapter three. Let's begin at verse eight. Okay? Likewise, must the deacons be graved, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, same quali qualities, okay? Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Okay, now stop, okay? The deacon, uh, the, the bishop, okay? Bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Okay? You see that? A deacon. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience. Do you see the difference already? Do you see? Okay? Deacon only appears in the Pauline epistles. That's it. So deacon, we can know right away, has something to do with the construct of the church of the living God. Not a title that you pay $100,000 for or is bestowed upon you by a Jesuit Catholic priest. Okay? And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. What are we reading on to? Verse 13. Okay. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good decree and boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Hmm. And let's finish this. These things write I unto thee, hoping to come on, to come unto thee shortly. If I tarry long, that thou mightest mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Hmm. John chapter 1. You want to see a good um, explanation, I believe, of, uh, what is it, of the deacon? John chapter 1. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Ah. Uh, Uh, one say okay, John chapter one. One second, please. Uh, I had to. John chapter one verses forty-three, on to verse fifty-one. Check this out. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip, check this out, was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Now see, the Christians in the church building take this, and they use this and twist this to say, Come to a church building where you can learn of Christ. See, that's us being a, an example, an ambassador. Okay, the lost are to see Christ in us by how we walk according to the scripture. Christianity, to get them into a phallus house, they say, come to the church bill. Where are you sending them? You got to send them to... No, 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 no. We as the church of the living God, no matter what calling you are called to, we as the ambassadors of Christ having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation, we are to point people through the scriptures 
to Jesus Christ. Not to a building, not to a man. Okay? You understand? So a deacon, or a deacon, good example I believe is right here. Come and see. You don't bring them to a building or to another man. It's like, here, come and see. Come and see. Okay? Come and see. But like I said, Christianity will take this. I've heard it. Uh, even, um, uh, what's his name? The Calvinist uh, Prince of Preachers guy. Spurgeon. You know, compel them to come in. Come into the church building. No. No. Where are you sending them? That, that cackle demon witch that I encountered last year on the square. It's like, well, where are you sending them? Ah, oh, to Jesus Christ through the scriptures. So, but yeah, but they need it. No, they don't need to go to a church building, you lying little heretic. Okay? See, Catholicism, Jesuitism has come in with that esoteric teaching that you have to be, uh, that you have to be exalted, approved of men. And it becomes a thing of titles. It becomes a thing of puffing people up. Okay? See, we as the Church of the Living God, we are called not only to speak, but to demonstrate. Okay? That's what 2 Corinthians 5 is all about. Walking our talk. Okay? Because if you haven't figured this out already, brother, sister, verbal witnessing is diminishing. The Titanic is going down. These people, sometimes the only witness you're going to get is how you react and behave in a godly manner according to the scriptures. Okay? All right? Okay? And come and see. You know? Come and see. It does not mean taking them to a church building. You don't go to church. Okay? You go to Jesus. Okay? Our job... Okay, fear the Lord and depart from evil as church of the living God is to present Jesus Christ to the lost through the scriptures, either by word, because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And if they will not hear, by our daily walk. Okay, let's continue in John here. Verse 47. And see, Philip, Brought them, brought Nathaniel to who? Jesus. Not a church building. You see how disgusting and warped and twisted that is? When you got these Christians, it's like, well, where are you sending them? You have to send them somewhere to be discipled. Jesus Christ, through the authorized version of the scriptures. Not a church building. You just went pond scum. Okay? Jesus saw Nathaniel coming. And saith to, of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered, and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Fig tree, go in a good direction on that. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God. Thou art the King of Israel. <laughs> I love this. Jesus answered and said unto him, Psst. Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, because, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Note that response by our Lord Jesus. The Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And interesting enough, our Lord, who said of Nathaniel, an Israelite, in whom is no guile, an Israelite, a Jew, and the Jew require a sign. And our Lord said, because I said unto thee? It's like, what is our Lord saying? Wait a minute. You, because I just told you? You're, you're a Jew. You require a sign. Notice, I saw, okay, because I said unto thee, because I, saw, I said unto thee, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree. Believe it now? He's like, no, 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 no. I know who you are. Thou shalt see. Greater things than these. Because the Jews require a sign. See how that works? And he saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see 
heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Okay? But the come and see thing. All right? That is, beg your pardon, <laughs> beg your pardon, that is the commonality with bishop, with elder, bishop, and deacon. Okay? These common traits to come and see, to, you know, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the closest that some of these lost people, especially at this time, are going to get of Christ is whom the Lord will send. Having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation. That's why I'm constantly reminding you and me to mind our walk. Because so many out there, ba -ba -ta -ba -ta -ba -ta -ba -ta. But then it's a it's a shoe. It's a, it's entertainment. The facade, you know. Like I tell you, who you see here is who you will meet out there. Okay. All right. But see, here here's the point. Now, here's what I really want us to get to. Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. To remind us, brethren, I don't care who you are in the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God. God has called you to something, okay? Whatever it is, um, I know, beloved, that there are those of you, my brothers, who um, are not doing anything. God has called you to something. What is it? That's between you and him. God has called you to something, okay? He has not called you to be idle and just waiting. He has called you to something. Ephesians 4, 9 on to verse 16. Now, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same above that, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some, check, pay attention, apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. Where is elder, bishop, or deacon in there? Hmm? Think about it. An elder could be a, pe a, a pastor or a teacher, an evangelist, yes? Could a deacon? Yes. Could a bishop? Oh, yes. Okay. Different positions. Different positions. Okay. One body, but different positions. So let's keep going. Okay. And why are there all these diversities? For the perfecting of the saints. The body of Christ, the church of the living God. You, brother and sister. Okay? For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. And who is a perfect man? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And we will be perfect man after we're redeemed and get our new body. Okay? Onto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Okay, and what are we reading to? Uh, verse 16, okay? That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they, they lie in wait to deceive. Yeah. Beware and, and hold your place here. Gotta gotta with that in, looming in the air. You gotta hit um, Colossians. Definitely gotta hit Colossians two eight. Beware Colossians two eight. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Okay, let's continue in Ephesians four, verse fifteen. But speaking the truth in love. And not this disgusting, sappy, bro hug, love them into the. No. 
A man who I call my best friend kicked me in the stones last night, not literally, but um, I, rebuked me, rebuked me well. And I understand that recently the pride's been getting out of control and the Lord sends checks and measures through a brother, through a sister, my wife, your sister, and through things. It's just like, Brad, you need to calm down. Thank you. And see, that's not faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, and they use philosophy in vain deceit, where a brother will use truth, a sister will use truth. I love it when you hurt me. I do. Let the righteous smite me. It'll be an excellent oil. The, the, the jerk devils, he, he, take a number. <laughs> You're going to be taking a number at the great white throne, boy. Yeah. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 on to verse 7. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, capital S. Elder, bishop, and deacon are different. Yes, they have the same thing. Why? Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are diversities of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations. But the same, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Okay, you're with me. I know you are. But the manifestation of the capital S Spirit, the Lord Himself, is given to every man to profit with all. Okay? All right? Profit with all. Ourselves for His profit. Okay, prophet, now prophet, okay? All right, the manifestation that the lost as an ambassador of Christ may see Christ in us, through us, okay? For to one is given by the capital S Spirit, the Lord himself, the word of wisdom, word of wisdom, fear of the Lord. To another, the word of knowledge by the same capital S Spirit, the Lord Himself. To another faith by the capital S Spirit, the Lord Himself, same Spirit. To another the, another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. The sign gifts, does that encompass that? Sure, but also actually being able to heal through recommending, uh, like the one, uh, one brother gave me a book on herbs and stuff. Praise the Lord for you, brother. I intend to be doing that this year. Like dandelion roots. You know how many uh, actual natural herbal remedies you have right outside your door? You got to get to them before they send the crews out there and spray poison around, though. You got to get that. You know, and that's something that winter does with the cold and the water. Helps the earth to heal, that kind of thing. The rabbit trail there. But there again, okay, gift of healing, okay? Sign gift encompassed in that, sure. But, you know, hey, brother... Um, um, garlic and honey, raw honey, okay? Turmeric and pepper in raw honey, okay? Garlic, clove, that kind of stuff, okay? Luke, the beloved physician, okay? All right, let's continue. Not these jesuit drug pushers to get you on pharmacaea. Ugh. Okay? Verse 10. To another, the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. T 
tongues is always a known language. Your okay. That's only known of Satan, and it's gibberish. Those are not the known tongues that are in Acts chapter two. You wicked devil! Uh, if you're doing that, be, shame on you. Shame yourself. Okay, that is not of God. Okay. You're either doing that yourself by hypnosis or there's a devil in you, okay? Be careful, okay? Tongues are known languages, not this blah, 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 gibberish, nonsense, 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 okay? But all these worketh that one and self-same capital S spirit, Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that spirit, Dividing to every man severally as he will. Okay? Okay? Verse 13, or verse 12. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Okay? Okay? Different functions, different positions, but one body. Verses 22 now on to verse 33. Uh, you know what? Let's just keep reading. Can you handle that? All right? For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made, been all made to drink uh, into one spiritual drink. And that rock is Christ. Okay? <clears throat> For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? Sure, you're not, you haven't been called to this, but the Lord has called you to something. Okay? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Brad, I, I, I don't do videos like that. I, I, I haven't been called to that. You can go out there and pass out tracks. You can go out and there are many things that the Lord can have you to do? Which one has he called you to do? I can tell you, he hasn't called you to sit there waiting, doing nothing. But he has called you to something. It's up to you and him. It's up to him for you to find out what it is. Okay? He's called you to something. What is it? I don't know. He and you. Okay? And unfortunately too, Satan sometimes knows him uh, well. Okay? But, okay, so what you don't do this? I don't do what you do. Okay? That doesn't mean that you're less. Because, but now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased me. As it has pleased. There are days when I don't want to do this. But it's not about me, it's about him. For the edification of the body of Christ, the church of the living God. Serving others. Self-sacrifice, charity. Okay? All right? As it has pleased him. You might not do this. You might not pass out tracks, whatever, but he's called you to do something. And brother, sister, uh, with all the nonsense, the, the, the stuff on the TV and the news, it, it's so blatant. It's, I was talking about this last night. It is so blatant, it's not even funny. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members yet but one body? The eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. 
Like Philip, hey, come see. Bring him to Jesus. Okay? You can't, I, how dare you? It's like, just because you pass out tracts, does, that doesn't mean that's a viable thing to do for God. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Okay? I have seen in some of these pastors that, well, that's good, but that's not a really big calling. You know, that was something I was rebuked on last night. It's like, you know, those who sing hymns, praise the Lord. Okay? And I was rebuked for, on that, oh, you know, because, okay, that that's a calling. Okay, to sing and to, uh, to praise and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, whatever. To sing psalms, to sing testimony unto our Lord Jesus Christ and stuff like that, okay? There are different diversities of gifts and things that we are called to do, and not one of them are without signification, okay? And yet I cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, I love this, and so should you. Upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Nathaniel, Philip, you know, what we saw in John. Hmm? Same man, that same one man delivered that city. The poor man delivered the city by his wisdom. But they didn't remember the same poor man. But they remembered the wisdom, the fear of the Lord. But who was the guy who did it? See what I'm saying? And these people, you know, the people who are out there passing out the tracks, who are going to jail for their testimony, for standing on the scriptures. Upon these we bestow more abundant honor. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Whatever the Lord has called you to do, it's what he has called you to do. Rejoice and be glad in that, that the Lord be magnified. Lesser thing to do. Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. No, that's, that's a lesser call. Shut up. The Lord rebuke you. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. One member be honored, all the members be uh, members rejoice with it. Rejoice with those who do rejoice and weep with those who weep. My brother or sister is hurting, I'm hurting. They're rejoicing in the Lord, we're rejoicing. I'm rejoicing. See, these fakes, these devils can't do that. These people who are all about themselves, they can't have joy in seeing people being used to the Lord who takes all the credit away from you and gives it on to the Lord. And you can see this in so many people. Sometimes, even in me. Forgive me, brethren. I am a sinner who is chief. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts. 
You might that but that's a no. Covet earnestly the best gifts. Why? So that the Lord may be glorified, not you. And see, there are the Christianity puts you know glor uh, be covetous of the great gifts, so that you may be glorified. No. To those who much is given, much is required. Don't be many masters. Covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet shew I unto you a more excellent way. Then, of course, the beautiful chapter of 1 Corinthians 13. Charity. Not love. Love and charity are two different things. Charity is self-sacrifice. Christianity preaches love is love. Like this, um, I heard about this um, this uh, unconditional conference led by Andy Stanley, which is the LGBTQ thing. Love is love. Sodomy, hey, that love is love. And they come to this where their Bibles take out charity and put love there. Charity is self-sacrifice. Charity is self-sacrifice. So. That's going to be it for this video, dear brethren. And dear brother who asked this of me, I hope this helps. Um, um, praise be to the Lord. Um, <laughs> praise be to the Lord. Thank you. Um, there are things that are different are not the same. But we're all one in Christ Jesus. And everything, every position, everything that we do is that God may be glorified and that we may edify and strengthen one another. Let us not forget that. Okay? But that's going to be it for this video. Um, thank you, brethren. Please keep us in your prayers and please pray for one another. Uh, please pray for one another. Remember, when the Lord uses you, when you are attacked by Satan, be allowed to be attacked, attacked by Satan to buffet you, remember, you must be doing something right. Thank you for my, uh, so much for watching this. If you do, I love you. Please keep us in your prayers. Please pray for one another. And we will see you in the next video.